put off by how long this video is, don't worry, I try to jam pack my videos with as much content and as much detail as I possibly can. Anything I feel I can comment on and that I feel you might be interested in, I pretty much put in the video. I try not to repeat myself and talk fairly fast. If the video is too long for you, I have recorded a shorter version and the link will be in the description box. American History X movie review. Neo-Nazi Derek comes out of jail after three years. He has reformed and is now trying to prevent his younger brother Danny from going down the same path that he did. But is it too late? Both of them are very intelligent and the women in their lives try to push them towards focusing on school. It's basically their, their shot at getting out of the lower class. Now, this, this brings up Mein Kampf, which is said to be tremendously boring. Incoherent, poorly written, a mess of barely understood, digested thoughts, very repetitive, and basically just regurgitating these sociological notes, newspaper articles, and books. And we're told that it took Danny a week to read the book. And given his high intelligence, I feel like that's the movie pointing to the fact that that book is very poorly written. And who cares about Hitler's favorite camp, anyway? And the, the essay is entitled, My Mein Kampf, which means my, my struggle, which, yes. Now, the, something that really, one of the first things that happens in this is that the principal hears about Danny having written this essay in high school about Mein Kampf and, you know, very ugly ideas in there. And the principal then says that, you know, he will now teach him history. And, you know, he, he thinks to himself, what would be a nice, catchy movie title? I mean, what would be a good name for this history class and decides on American History X, which Danny also titles his essay, which, I don't know, I, I, that seems a little strange to me to title your essay the same thing as the classes. I, I figure that, you know, the title should be something you came up with yourself, but mm, maybe not. Now, Edward Norton is incredible in this. This really charismatic lieutenant of this neo-Nazi group. You know, you see him getting people riled up, and you can understand why. You can understand why this guy could get people to commit violence. And this is something that fiction dealing with something this dangerous sometimes has to do. It has to risk making compelling arguments for the wrong side so that we can recognize it you know when we see these things in real life and take action against it rather than just figure well you know what happened to it happened over there and to these other people and back then so it can't happen again when yeah these things happen and they yeah we have to remain vigilant and he does have this appearance of kind of the Nazi ideal, you know, tall, strong, fast. A lot of women online review, you know, user reviews online have the women, you know, saying that, oh, he's really hot. And a few of them at least admit that it's really disturbing to say so, but I would just, I would hope that these people really attracted to Derek the neo-Nazi, regardless of their gender, are actually neo-Nazis themselves, because that would be considerably less d disturbing and unsettling 
than the idea that they're like, well, sure, he's incredibly violent towards minorities, but have you seen those abs? Now, and, you know, Edward Furlong is great in this. He really gets to show that, you know, the, the kid could act. And I haven't seen him in anything more, terribly much more recently, so I don't know if that's still the case. Now, Derek and Danny are our two protagonists. Everything is sort of told via their perspective and through their lens. You know, we we see almost nothing that they didn't experience. And throughout the movie, Danny will narrate. And this is basically him writing his essay. You know, it's, a, it's that kind of device to, to enable, yeah, sneak some narration in there without it being like, wait, who is he even telling the story to? Why is he going on with this? So, yeah. And part of this is also their close relationship with, yeah, Derek doesn't want Danny to go down that road. Meanwhile, Danny, without Derek in his life for these three years, has gone far down that road. And, yeah, it's, it's very much about the two of them. Now, the, we also have gr great supporting actors. Fairusa, if I'm pronouncing it correctly, Bulk, always this, I, I can't think of a thing I've seen her in where she wasn't awesome. She, you know, she's solid as this really intense, downright scary girlfriend of Derek's. And like, and this is where I'm going to sound like one of those, you know, people talking. I find her extremely sexy in this, but I also find her terrifying. There's you can really tell that she's getting off on this conflict and race hatred. There are these very telling close-up shots of her when, like, you know, yeah, when, when really hatred, hateful things are being said. She, you know, yeah, she's clearly getting excited about it. Now, and, you know, Ethan... Ethan to play fantastic. He's one of the angriest of the neo Nazis we see. He's introduced singing the battle hymn of the Republic with, you know, yeah, these in 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 the work van I think it is, and you know, yelling not just singing, yelling along to these hateful lyrics of, I think something like taking down the Zion machine. Jew by Jew by Jew, the white man marches on. And even as he is yelling along to these hateful lyrics, he's still like all this pent up, barely restrained rage. Is it? He's he's shaking, and I mean, he's clearly itching to beat someone up, to break something. And, you know, Stacy Keach as the leader of the neo-Nazis, very strategic and always keeping himself out of, you know, he's, he can control everything and he can encourage really violent behavior because he's never directly part of it. They, they know that that's it. They, they say very early on, we know that this guy's behind it, but we can't grab him on anything. He's, he's, so, he's so careful. Now, and you know, with this being near the end of the 90s, we are deep within some of the best Star Trek. So, you know, we've got Cisco in full badass mode. He's the principal, he is awesome. Like, one of the first things is like, you know, he's he's yelling for Danny to get into his office, you know, and Danny doesn't show up immediately. And he's like, five, four, three, two, is your awesome. And you know, we've got Kess who's like, Quiet, but hardly defenseless. Now, the this movie is raw, brutal, visceral, shocking, powerful, and it doesn't feel like it's just trying to get a reaction. It's all organic, and it never comes across mean-spirited, in spite of us seeing some horrible things in this. And, you know, there's 
barely any point in the movie where much time passes without tension, sometimes even violence. It's not constantly violent, but it always feels like, you know, any minute now, this explosive hatred is really going to rage. Now, and it does make, excuse me, it is very hard to watch. It's gritty, authentic, it feels real, and it's in part because these people and events are based on real life. And it's one of these movies that does not let the viewer, you know, think how bad could it have been, you know, because it shows you just how bad it is in unflinching detail. And the movie from start to finish is tense and intense. Now, some say this is too manipulative and I can see why. And this shows very much how hatred lives in and feeds on young people, enraged young people who are trapped in a bad situation, in poverty, in a bad neighborhood. You know, it gives them an object of their hatred, a, you know, an enemy that they can destroy. And they feel that, you know, that will fix their bad situation, you know, and the fact that they don't have enough, maybe that's because there are all these other ethnicities in the area and they're taking, you know, in, in these neo-Nazis perspective, these ethnicities are taking too much or they shouldn't be taking at all. And, you know, so yeah, they point to them and say, if they weren't here taking, there'd be more for us. And, you know, it, the, the other ethnicities are very much the other, you know, and when you're living from one paycheck to another, there is a very real sense of danger. You are at risk. You know, if you lose your job, that might be it. You might lose your home and that's it. You know, there's, there's no hope. So, you know, with, with this, they very much feel at risk and that, you know, you know, an animal is never more dangerous when it's, you know, wounded, when it's, when it has its back against the wall. So they, you know, try, so, so they go and fight the other. And it shows how hatred, you know, spreads through generations, the, you know, the cycle of racism. And, you know, it's clear that the family life, this family's lives are made worse by Derek, even even when he isn't there, because the three years he was away, he wasn't there to earn a paycheck. So in the meantime, they you know they lost their house and have to live in this tiny trailer. He he comments very early on, this entire place is smaller than our old living room, you know, and yeah, it's. It's, it's very telling. Now, the, this was re-edited before release against the director's wishes and, on the other hand, very much by Edward Norton's wishes. And he did the same thing with The Incredible Hulk. Or actually, at that one, I think he more helped write the, the script. But, yeah, he... He has an idea that his creative ideas are really, really good. And having not, you know, I haven't watched the original or the, I think, unrated, I, I don't remember what they call it. But, you know, I can't say for sure if his version is better or worse, but his version is definitely good. And, you know, among the things that have been changed is, you know, the ending has been changed very very much. And this is the only thing by Tony K that I've watched. Now, part of the, you know, the story, the background is told via nonlinear flashbacks, these vignettes in black and white. And the choice of black and white really shows that, you know, his, Derek's view was very black and white back then. No nuance. And it also, you know, communicates 
there was no joy in their lives. It, their lives were dominated by this hatred. Now, this features, you know, the, or, yeah, not, this features the Crips, not actual members, I don't think, but, yeah, so, so very much, you know, relevant when, yeah, and this came out, you know, right around, the, you know, I think 98, so, yeah, big deal at the time. And the, the movie very clearly understands racism. It's not saying that, you know, th these are not evil people, they're misguided. And some say it's preaching, saying that, maybe. But, you know, it, it shows more than one ethnic group to have some hateful members and some innocent people. Now... The ending is amazing, though some disagree, and I can't see why. And although I disagree, the movie has been called simplistic, obvious, exploitative, lecturing, heavy, heavy-handed, with some melodrama and even overrated. Now, this is telling the, you know, this kind of gang you know, lower class LA neighborhood kind of story through the lens of the, you know, these white trash, you know, yeah, this white trash family rather than, you know, or borderline white trash, rather than via the, you know, the, the black gangs and such. And I think that's a good choice because there are a lot of movies, as well there should be, about the black gangs. And I think it's it's very important to also make compelling movies that show the other side of that. And it's it's not really on anybody's side. It's just saying, you know, it's what what is that thing about? You know, video doesn't lie. It's basically just showing what actually happens and it focuses mainly on you know these white people but you know yeah it it shows awful behavior from various different sides now there's a lot of like ego and machoism to the you know the the subculture the subculture is here and there are very few female neo-Nazis. You know, I mentioned that Stacy, Derek's girlfriend, you know, fires a bulk. She's one of the only ones. And for her, it very clearly is a kind of sexual thing. You know, she she believes in the cause, but it's not just a, you know, yeah, she, she very clearly gets off on it. And you know, where where the men are more outwardly aggressive. Now, the only member of Derek's family, the, the Vineyards, who does not have a name starting with the letter D, is the youngest, whose name is Allie, and she's just a few years old when we see her, and you know, with with that name, with with rather than a D, it's you know an A as the first letter. It's kind of like a hope for the future, a a new beginning, maybe. Now, the movie points to imperfect solutions to complex problems. Again, it doesn't say that. You know, it very much is not on the side of the racists. But it does point out some things that enrage, you know, people in these communities and out of them. But you know, in these communities, it leads overtly to violence. And yeah, the, the movie doesn't pretend to have the answers. It's really just saying, this is what we have right now. Does anybody 
does anybody who looks at it objectively actually think that this is going to fix anything? You know, we have to rethink this. But it's not so arrogant as to claim that this, you know, this problem has an easy answer. It's, you know, which I think is, again, that's a trap that a number of films about this subject fall into. You know, no, no, we just have to realize that this, you know, or that, and then everything would be... This does not at all say anything like that. Now, this uses slow-mo, including extreme slow-mo, to great effect. There are these shots of, you know, people taking showers, and, like, you can see the water, you know, just, yeah, it's, it's very compelling. Now, there's also this thing of hair length, where the, the neo-Nazis are very clearly, you know, not, not all of them, but certainly the, the members of the, 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 both Derek and Danny, when they are neo-Nazis, they are completely clean-shaven. Whereas the longer hair suggests that they're not that hateful at that point in their lives. And given that we have all these flashbacks, you know, the, the hair length helps us place this flashback in time and, you know, also just signify. There are a lot of nice little details like that. The, you know, how how these characters act towards another says a lot about you know and and where that takes place in time in in the chronology that we're presented with please comment thumbs up and subscribe for more content